Okay, so we just created our interface. When I press play, I have, this is the interface in the upper left. I have it set to run on event begin play, but we haven't really done anything in our interface right now. Uh, this blue outline is a 1080 by 1920 viewport, and we're gonna try and place our information in that viewport in a place that we want it to be seen. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete this. And we're gonna be using a progress bar, but a progress bar fills the entire space in which it's placed. So we are going to start instead with a type of panel. And that type of panel is going to be a horizontal box. Once I have a horizontal box, I can change its size. So I'm gonna go down to transform is right here and under transform I'm going to change the scale to a quarter of the screen in width and a 20th of the screen or 0.05 in height. I am then going to use my translation to slide this and I'm grabbing the edge and then sliding my mouse in order to see where it's going. And right, like just about here might be good. And then I'm gonna move it up. Yep, and sometimes it's really quirky. It's really sensitive. Sometimes I start moving it and it seems like it's not moving and then it jumps a tremendous amount. So I'm gonna try 650 by 480. And I think that that's gonna put me See, I can mouse over and yeah, 1920 is just about here. So it's about two squares down and two squares over. So that's where my horizontal box is going to be. I'm gonna close the panel tab and I'm gonna go up to the common tab and I'm just gonna take a progress bar and drop it onto the horizontal box. And that progress bar is going to currently be pretty small, but I can say fill, and it will then fill the entirety of the horizontal box. So now if I compile and save, and then go and say play, I have a bar in the upper right. This right now is meant to be a background to the bar, and when it starts filling up, it will fill up in a, a darker or maybe a different color, depending on the settings that are in here and the ones that we choose. Okay, so to do that, it's under progress, and progress is based on percent. And so what we can do is we can tie this percentage to the number of coins that we pick up. So to do that, I'm gonna click bind, and I'm gonna create a binding. And this basically creates a new blueprint function. I'm gonna space those out, and the return value is going to be the percent that it uses, and it uses a single precision type float. So we are going to drag this off and say cast to character. And I think we're going to be casting to BP third person character. So we're casting to this blueprint where we placed the coins. And so I'm going to drag as the BP third person character, I want you to get coin, Oops, get coin count is the thing that I'm looking for. And get coin count. So right now we have four coins in here. So if I drag this off and say divide, and then I divide this by four. Now this is an integer, this is an integer, and it's expecting to output an integer. Integers are whole numbers one, two, three, and four. And this is looking for a percent. So I need to right click this and convert this pin from an integer to a float single precision. I can then connect these two and it will take the numbers one, two, three, or zero, one, two, three, or four 
divide it by four and then give me either 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, or 100%, and then that number will be returned and will become my percentage in my interface. Compile. Oh, I forgot to give it an object. So what we're looking for here is get player character. And it's looking for the first one. So this is going to be the screen for the first player. Compile and save. Move this out of the way. And now I can press play. And here's my empty field. And when I hit a coin, it starts filling up. And in my case, I have a blue fill that's happening. So let's go back to designer. So in interface, there's graph and designer over here. In the designer mode, you can see down here, my default fill and color opacity is this cyan. And the, I believe it's under style, the background image is this white. And I could make it darker or I could make it alpha or I could make it disappear. I could set the alpha to zero and it wouldn't have anything there. And then I could change this to be a slightly different color if I wanted. Say okay, compile. And now when I press play, there's gonna be nothing there until I pick it up. And those are my coins. Um, I could also add text to this, which might help me out. So I could place text into that block and have it say text block. Coins. That's odd that it's not showing up. Maybe move it on top. Let me try this. Hmm. It is not showing up, is it? I can't move it out of that. Can I create a different? Sorry, panel. What I really want to do is I want to add it to not be a child, but be its own thing. That is quite awkward. Okay. Under this, I can say fill 100%. Maybe I can say 0.85 fill. Hmm. I'm going to stop here because this is obviously another change that they've made in five. And my coin counter is working well. It's just not clear that it's a coin counter. I'm going to add a new tutorial for this year, which is going to be how to do a health bar. And when I get into the health bar, I'll show you how to add the text labels to do this. Um, so let's go ahead and compile, save, move this over here, make sure that it's still working. And sure enough, there we go. I've got my, my full bar set up. And when I reach four coins, it's at 100%. So that's one of the ways in which we can create an interface. We're tracking the number of coins in the player character and we're able to pull that information into the user interface by using cast2. And that wraps up tutorial five of our coins segment.